I got a message from Teresa who wrote, your video making text entry boxes work was really helpful. Question, is there a way that the learner can edit their input on a second screen? For example, we want them to revisit their initial response after they learn more about the course content. Well, like Teresa, I was thinking about this particular problem, and I kept thinking in terms of having an initial text entry box slide, some additional content, and then a second text entry box slide where they could edit that information. But I couldn't figure out a way to populate the second text entry box slide with that earlier content. So let's delete that here, and I'll show you what I did come up with that I think is a viable solution. So here's my initial text entry box slide. In fact, my only text entry box slide. I'm going to need to do a couple things here. First off, uh, because I'm going to be using a nonlinear approach to this, I'm going to actually turn off the navigation controls for this project. So we'll just get rid of that and then return to our slide here. We're going to need a couple of variables to start things off. So I'm going to go into my project drop down menu and I'm going to select variables here. Now, because I created some text entry boxes, uh, you'll see some text entry box variables here, but I'm going to create a bunch of new variables. The first thing is we'll just create a variable called v underscore uh, user underscore input. And we'll use this for our text entry box. I recommend using your own variable because obviously that's going to have a little bit more meaning than just text entry box two or three or so on. So we'll save that as one of our variables. We'll add another variable. This will be v underscore teb underscore visits. We're going to keep track of the number of visits to this particular slide that the user um, visits. So this will be an initial value of zero, but uh, we'll increment that every time they visit this slide. So we'll hit save and we're going to add um, a couple of other variables here. V underscore message one. This will be the initial message that appears at the top of this slide. And I've already written this out, so I'll just copy and paste that into here. Uh, enter your initial thoughts here. So we'll save that. But because we want this slide to appear like it's a different slide when users return to it, we're going to create a new variable called v underscore message2. And we're going to pre-populate that with the message. Uh, now that you've watched the video in this case, uh, revise what you wrote based on this new information. So we'll save that. So we have basically four variables uh, that we're going to be using for this particular interaction. So the first thing we need to do is on enter of this slide here, we want to have the message, the first message appear uh, with the appropriate instructions for the user here. So let's click on our properties inspector. I'm going to select all the text in that text caption and use the insert variable icon that you find here to start off but with the initial uh, variable, uh, the initial message. So we're going to select v underscore message one. I'm going to increase the number of characters uh, so they don't have to worry about running out of space to type. We'll click OK. And that's set up uh, the way I would expect it to. Next, we'll customize our text entry box. So I'm going to select the text entry box here. On success actually will be no action. We don't want to do that. We're going to get rid of the shortcut key. Uh, no action for focus. Lost is fine. I'm going to uncheck show button because, of course, I've got my own button on this slide where I'm going to write some advanced action. And um, I'll get rid of that. But we're also going to turn on the scroll bar because, of course, if the user writes more than one line of text, we want it to wrap to another row. Uh, let's just double check here under style. Make sure that you retain the text as well. And in this case here, we're going to point this at our user input variable that we created. Again, so that the uh, variable associated with this text entry box has a little bit more meaning. Uh, and that's pretty much good to go. So let's take a look at our button on this slide. Um, right now it's uh, go to next slide, which is the default of most buttons. But we're going to change this to execute advanced actions. And we're going to write our first advanced action for this particular uh, project here. So 
we'll call this um, TEB text entry box underscore navigation. And this will be a conditional action because, we, you know, depending on the circumstances, we're going to do one of two things. So uh, in this case here, we're going to start off with our tracking variable that we created uh, V underscore text entry box visits or TEB visits. Um, and we're going to say is equal to the literal value zero. This is what it's starting off as. We're going to jump to slide three where the course content is. Uh, we're also going to increment. Increment means simply increase the value of something. In this case here, our tracking variable TEB underscore visits by a value of one. Now, if I return to this slide after viewing the content, uh, we're going to be checking that TEB visits value and it's going to have a value of one at this point. So that's going to be an else situation. And in the else situation, we simply want to jump to slide four, which is the rest of this particular e-learning project. So I'm going to save that as an action. Click OK and we'll click close. We're pretty much good with this slide here. Here is our, um, this is our content slide here. And, uh, you know, the user would watch the movie and we'll just, you have a button here. We're going to label that as continue to give the illusion to the learner that they're just continuing in a linear fashion. But in this case, of course, we're going to return them back to that text entry box slide. We'll click on our advanced action icon, and this will be a new advanced action. So we'll click the plus icon here, and we'll call this after underscore content. We're gonna do a couple things. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to assign the underscore message. That's our first message that appeared on slide two with the value contained within the underscore message too. So we'll be updating that slide with a different message, making it appear like it's a second or a different uh, text entry box slide. And then we're simply going to jump to slide number two. And we'll save that as an action. Click OK. We'll click close. Make sure that our advanced action for that continue button is pointing to the advanced action we just wrote, and we should be good to go. So let's preview this in HTML5. So here we are, as you can see, the message on this slide says, enter your initial thoughts here. So I'm gonna write in my initial thoughts, and then we'll click our button. This takes us to our content slide here, and we've watched the video, and now we're gonna hit continue, returns us back to this slide. As you can see, now we have an updated message. Now that you've watched the video, revise what you wrote based on this new information. And I could replace what's there, or I could add additional thoughts as I see fit. And then of course, click my button to continue. And on I go with the rest of the online learning course. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.